and seamless unity
chapter 20 tonight. We're going to continue. I want to add a little bit more to what we did the last time on Revelation chapter 20. I want to specifically develop just a little bit more on the phrase 1,000 years. We talked about that last week and I want to just read in uh, chapter 20 verses 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and then we're going to develop that just a little bit more. I shared with you how that there's a whole lot of confusion because of the fact that people interpret the book of Revelation literally. But let me just say, you cannot take a book of the Bible and interpret part of it literally and part of it spiritually. The law of interpretation does not allow you to do that. So when you get, for example, into the book of Revelation and eschatological teachers come to the word lamb, well, obviously, they don't say, well, that's a barnyard creature that goes back. <laughs> uh, when they come to Revelation 12, the sun-clothed woman that births a man-child, they don't say that's a literal physical woman that has a literal physical baby. Uh, when they come to the 1,260 days, they don't say that that's literal. They don't say that uh, any of the, uh, uh, of the symbology in the book of Revelation is spiritual and then make some of it literal. You can't do that. The, the, as I said, the law of interpretation will not allow you to do that. And so I want to develop some things around that tonight. But before we do, I want to read in Revelation chapter 20, verses 2 through 6. And I may comment just a little bit concerning some things that we said last time. But notice what it says there in verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, bound him a thousand years, and we have the first a thousand years, cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up, set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Now we find the second thousand years. And after that he should be loosed a little, 
season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. That's your third thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, let me just develop a few things as we go through this. First of all, the word millennium. So many people today talk about millennium, and they interpret that as a thousand years of peace. And it is true that that word has to do with a thousand years. And the place that we find this is specifically in the book of Revelation, chapter 20. People have connected this 1,000 years with a rapture. They've connected it with a seven-year tribulation. They have connected uh, this 1,000 years with eternal torment. They've connected it with a whole lot of things that they believe are going to be happening where current events are concerned. But as we shared the last time, 1,000, the 1,000 years has to do with a people, has to do with a realm, has to do with an experience, has to do with a people that are living out of the most holy place, a people through whom Christ is reigning. It represents a people that are living by faith. It represents a people that are living from the inside out. And we established all that last week. Don't have time to go back into all of that. But this is not literal. It is spiritual. You know, it says in chapter 1 that John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, which yeah. was not Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. It was a realm. It was an experience yes. that he was experiencing. What was he experiencing? He was experiencing this 1,000 years that we just read about here. That's what he was experiencing. Now, in Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8, talking about the day of the Lord and talking about this 1,000 years, it says there, that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Notice, a thousand years is a day, and a day is as a thousand years. So what that is denoting is the day of the Lord. Now, yeah. when you read on further in Second Peter 3 there, it talks about the fire of God, and it talks about the elements melting with the fervent heat, passing away with a loud noise. And we found out last week that the word elements is stoichion in the Greek, and it means the first principles. It does not just mean, when it says the first principles are being burned up, it doesn't just mean works tall and sweat and, and all of the religion and legalism that we were involved in, but it also, first principles also points to everything we have under Adam here. Mm -hmm. Thinking that we're finite, thinking yes. you know that we're controlled by time and space and that we're mortal and that we're limited and that we're corruptible and that we are at home in the body and that we're still an old woman yeah. or an old man, you yeah. might say. So you see, what it's talking about there is the fact that in the day of the Lord, this 1,000 years, it is talking about what God is doing right now through his fire yes. as yes. the word comes forth and swallows up all of the religiosity and all of those things that we were at one time and still, for the most part, religion thinks that they still are. So this is the day of the Lord. Yeah. This is the day of the Lord. It's a dimension. It's a realm. It's living from the inside out. It's living, uh, experiencing the most holy. It's experiencing this last feast, the Feast of Tabernacles. And when you read that in context there in those verses that we just read, you can readily see, when you have that understanding, you can see that that is what it means. Now, let me give you several scriptures tonight. The first one I want us to look at is in Psalm 50 and verse 10 that uses... A thousand. I want to look at three specifically, and I want to show you that even there you can't take it literally. And this first one here in Psalm 50 and verse 10 says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Right. Now, is that literal? Yeah, one thousand. He just owns a cattle on one thousand hills? <laughs> um, obviously, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Well, if he owns every beast, if he owns it all, if he made it all, then guess what? He owns all the cattle on all the hills. There you go. <laughs> uh -oh, so that cannot be talking about a uh, literal thousand hills that he's talking about. Let me give you another in Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9. 
the Lord is faithful who keeps his word to a thousand generations. So does his mercy, does his faithfulness stop there after a thousand generations? <laughs> or is it eternal? We're in trouble. No. We're in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. If that's the only longer it lasts, then we're in trouble. Listen, his covenant is eternal. His faithfulness and his mercy and his grace is not just to a thousand generations. It is eternal, we find out in the book of Revelation and elsewhere. Yes. Let me give you another one. Last one. Psalm 105 verse 8 says he remembered his covenant to a thousand generations. And also here, he commanded his word to a thousand generations. And if it was just a literal thousand generations, how limited would that be? So my point is, that is just simply figurative language there. It's just simply an abiding principle that we need to understand is not and has nothing to do with anything limited, but it is an abiding principle. Yeah. Abiding. It's an abiding, it's an eternal, yes. it is an infinite truth that you and I have to do with today. Whoa. Now, wow. back in Revelation chapter 20, when we dealt with that, we saw in the first few verses there that there was an angel, or in other words, there was a message. There was a key to a bottomless pit. There was a chain, and remember I shared with you how that a chain has links, and I believe this chain had at least 12 links, the 12 redemptive aspects of the finished work of Calvary, and it bound Satan, it bound religion, and it cast not only religion, but everything under Adam, it bound all of that, and it got rid of any foundation that any of this would have. None of this under Adam has any foundation. Yeah. You're not finite. You're not limited. Yeah. You're not mortal. You're not a human being. You're not corruptible. You are immortal. You are eternal. You are incorruptible. You are the word truth made flesh. Anything, anything else that appears to be has absolutely no foundation whatsoever. Yeah. And that's what we see in Revelation chapter 20. <coughs> and so the thousand years has to do with a realm of experience, a realm of reality that a people are beginning to come into the realization and the experience of. Amen. Amen. Now, if you go to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, let me read a scripture there in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, because a lot of people are saying that the day that we live in is getting bleaker and bleaker and darker and darker and worse and worse. Oh <laughs> I just want to tell you that it is to some people, it depends where you're seated. <laughs> it depends where you're seated. Yes. And most people are not seated in the heavenlies and living out of that dimension. Yeah. So for them who center up on current events where the book of Revelation yep. is concerned, it is getting darker and bleaker and bleaker if you're interpreting it from a literal sense. And you know, listen, we, God needs, there is a people. Yeah. Yes. There is a people in the earth that are beginning to see the whole earth full of the glory of God, yes. the world, and they that dwell therein. Yes. We're beginning to see the whole earth the way he sees it. We're beginning to see the end from the beginning. We're beginning to see all people reconciled. Yes. Yes. We're beginning to see that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes. And you see, when God has a people in the earth like that, that are living the 1,000 years out of this realm and this dimension, then it doesn't matter what it appears like, we will be able to bring about the expression and the experience of the whole world and the whole earth full of the glory of God already. There has to be a people that Absolutely. walk by faith where that is concerned. Yes. And then we bring that into the experience yes. in people's lives. That's right. So here in the Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, I want to read this verse in, in several different translations. You know, I, I heard a man today on TV, and I don't spend a whole lot of time listening to uh, preachers and teachers that are teaching just from a literal sense of the book of Revelation or eschatological uh, dimension or realm. But I heard one say today, that, you know, the four, uh, four blood moons that are supposed to happen, we want to just knock some holes in that theory tonight. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> Can I knock a few holes in that theory tonight? I want to show you what they're basing that upon. And if you can see the truth 
of what I share about this, you will see that there is no way that can Come take on. place. What they're doing is interpreting something from a literal standpoint. Yeah. And I heard the man say today, when the last of the four blood moons takes place, the judgment of God is going to be released. Oh, well, honey, the judgment of God has already been released. It happened in Calvary over 2014 Come years on. ago. And yes, I do believe America is going to be judged, but they're going to be judged by a people that are one with the fire of God going forth and showing them that their judgment already was exacted over 2,000 years ago yes. at the cross of Calvary in the death of Barrow and the resurrection. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. So look what Proverbs 4.18 says. But the path of the just is as the shining light that's yes. getting worse and worse every day. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me get into a better line here. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Now listen to me. Listen to several uh, other translations. And Rotherham says, But the path of the righteous is as the light of dawn going on and brightening unto meridian day. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. RSV says, which shines brighter and brighter unto full day. Full day. Wow. See, we're in full day. Full day. Hello. In fact, you are the day. Yes, we are. And I can take this even further and tell you that you are the 1,000 years. But we won't touch that right now. Now, Moffat's translation says, like a ray of dawn shines on and on unto the full light of day. Full mm. light. Young's literal says, going on and brightening till the day is established. Mm. Gotta get something established. Amplified says, but the path of the uncompromisingly just and righteous is like the light of dawn that shines more and more brighter and clearer hey. until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect to be prepared day. Well, I want you to know. The Lamb's wife has prepared and made herself ready. And so this is the to-be-prepared perfect day that we're beginning to experience. Now, many think that Christ will reign for a thousand years, and certainly he will. But again, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. And as Peter said, during this day of the Lord, there are things that are being burned up between our ears. Amen. A lot of things are on fire and the smoke of religiosity is ascending and smoke just simply signifies traditions and dogmas of yeah. men that are not the truth of the reality of God so the day of the Lord this 1,000 years or this day of the Lord is in us as our life tonight and as we begin to live from the inside out from the most holy as we begin to live by faith as we begin to to experience the dimension that John the Apostle was in, we tap into the realm and the reality of spirit and we begin to live out of that as a people have never lived out of that. See, I believe there's a dimension that we're beginning to live out of and some of you might squirm a little bit about this, but I believe that many of the prophets and even the apostles of Jesus never experienced. No. Nope. But are, we are beginning to experience See, Paul even yes. said that. Yeah. He, he talked right. about the fact that there's a people in the earth that are going. See, he said in Philippians, and we dealt with this last week, yeah. that he desired to experience resurrection while still living in the, uh, yeah. in the physical body. Yeah. But we know that he laid his life down. He, he right. gave his life at, in martyrdom. Yeah. He was a martyr. Right. So you see, there's a people in the hour that we're living in that are experiencing all of this day of the Lord that we have been talking about. Now, let me have you go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible imagery for the day of the Lord begins in the book of Genesis chapter 1 where God, it says, created the light and he named it day. It says, and God said, let there be light and there was light. And the Spirit of God, it says, vibrated or brooded over the face of the deep and light, as God said, let there be, or light be, light was. Mm -hmm. So that means simply that when God created light, it sprung forth from his logos, which was Christ, the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And here in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, notice it says, speaking of Jesus Christ, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, 
and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So what is this saying here in Hebrews 1, 3? It's simply saying that what the sun's rays are to the sun, Christ is to God. What the Christ, what the sun's rays are to the sun, Christ is to God. In other words, he was that expression when God said, let there be light, and there was light. That was the logos, that was the Christ that came forth in the earth. And from that time, from that time on, see, do you know that in Genesis chapter 1, it talks about the fact that there was light before there was ever a sun and a moon and stars? Mm -hmm. So what is this light talking about? It's talking about Christ. Yeah. It's talking about the revelation of the light and the understanding. It's talking about Christ because it wasn't until several verses later that he hung the sun, the moon, and the stars. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but let me have you go to Isaiah chapter 60, if you will, tonight. Isaiah chapter 60, and I want to read verses 1 through 3. Through three. Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3. Things come through me so fast sometimes I get all muddled up in my speaking. Things are just, I tell you what, they just bounce off on the inside, on the inside of my head that sometimes when I try to speak, they don't even come out, and I really sense the anointing in this place tonight. <laughs> chapter 60. Again, what am I trying to establish? I'm simply establishing yes. that the 1,000 years has to do with an experience of reality that you and I are beginning to experience like we've never experienced before. <laughs> See, the scripture says we're the light yep. of the world. We're the salt of the earth. In Ephesians, it says we are the children of the day. It says we're the children of the light. So you see, we're the realm. Realm. We're one with this realm. We're one with this most holy place. We are one with this day of the Lord. We are one with this 1,000 years. Yeah. Notice what it says in Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Let me say that a few times. Arise, shine, for thy light is. Not going to. It has. It is come. And the glory of the Lord is mm -hmm. yeah. upon me. risen Woo! upon thee. Yeah. For behold, the darkness shall yeah. cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee from the inside to the out, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, yeah. and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Amen. Kings are coming to the brightness of our rising. What does that say? That's simply saying there's a people that are living out of this 1,000 years reality and experience, and they, have, they are bearing fruit that remains, and people see that fruit, and they see that you're not all confused and involved in religiosity and works and toil and sweat, and you realize you're not human, you're not mortal, you're not limited, you're not affected by time and space. And they begin to come to you one by one, or maybe even someday by the groves. In fact, shortly I think that's going to happen. Yes! They're going to come to yes. us by the groves, and they're going to want us to teach them the ways of our God. That's right. Not just the acts, but the ways of our God. Yes. Now, let me just slow down a little bit here. How many know there's a man by the name of Albert Einstein? He wrote a book entitled Einstein's God. Mm -hmm. At the end of his life, he began to really come to know God. Mm -hmm. But this book, entitled Einstein's God, it delves deeply into the concept of his theory of relativity. And what he came up with was any time you try to make a distinction between past, present, and future, 
you're getting into an illusion. Whoa, hey. And he simply said, he simply said that time is not what it seems. Yes. Time does not go only in one direction and then the future time, so to speak, enter simultaneously and we continue to go on that way. See, I know a man by the name of Joshua that caused time to stand still and at one point he even caused it to back up. And so therefore what Einstein, his theory, what he came up with is really the truth. People say, time marches on. <laughs> does time march on? Mm. Or is that just an illusion? Yeah. Do we just think that it does? Is it just an appearance? Yes. Yeah. What we must understand yeah. is we exist in the now. Yeah. Everything that we have need of exists in the, in the now. now. That's right. It's within us. Yeah. And if we can begin to live out of the nowness of God or oh. live by faith, or live by the isness of God or the asness of God or the 1,000 years of Revelation chapter 20, then you see time and space no longer will affect us. Thank God time and space does not have to affect us. Now let me give you an example of that. Let's say you're downtown and they're having a 4th of July parade. And so you're seated on the street there in a chair and you're watching this parade as it comes by. And you see, as the parade comes through, you see the first part of that, but you haven't seen the end part of that Mm -hmm. parade. Mm -hmm. When the last part of the parade goes past you, that's your past. Mm -hmm. And the future that you saw, or the first part of the parade, is already gone in your past. (laughs) But let's say now you're in a high-rise building. There you go. And you're looking down at the parade. Guess what? You're seeing the end from the beginning. You are seeing the whole parade from the beginning to the end. In other words, you're seeing the parade now. Hello. Yes. See, that is the way God sees. And that's he tells us to see that that's way. So good. And that is truly living out of yeah. the nowness. Yeah. That's living out of eternality. That's living out of the isness of God. Yep. That's tapping into this dimension of the 1,000 years that we talked about last week. Huh. That's living out of the day of the Lord. Yeah. And again, that's where John was when he received this book of Revelation. He was in the spirit on the Lord's Day, which isn't, again, Saturday or Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, but it was a, dim- a dimension of reality that he tapped into and that he lived out from. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm here to declare to you there are a people tonight yeah. that are beginning <clears throat> to live out of this dimension. Yeah. We're beginning to realize that there's only one power yeah. and one presence and one mind. We're beginning to realize that that chain in Revelation chapter 20, the 12 redemptive aspects of the finished work of Calvary, got rid of everything that does not have to do with Christ right. and the many members in Christ of people Amen. that are We're on confused. this earth. Yes, and the foundation was completely kicked out from underneath. Right. Mm-hmm. Come on, by the way. Works, toil, and sweat. And all that we thought we were. See, I believe there's got to be a people in the earth that not only teach that the work is finished, but we must teach how finished that it is. And to teach how finished that it is, we cannot just say, well, grace declares and the finished work declares that we no longer walk by the Ten Commandments or live by the Ten Commandments or any of the law. We have to go beyond that and realize that if you think that you are finite and mortal and limited and corruptible, that's the law as well. And you're really walking by grace when you realize that everything that's true of Christ is true of you. Hallelujah. Now, Joel chapter 2 and verse 31. Enoch and Elijah, listen, they were ahead of their time. Oh yeah, they experienced something under an old covenant. Come on. It was way ahead of their time. Way ahead. Mm-hmm. And there's a people in the earth, the first fruit, yep. call them what you will, that are ahead of their time. Mm-hmm. You know, it says of Paul the Apostle, he was man, a man born out of due season. Yeah. Yep. He was ahead of his time. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm looking at the people tonight mm -hmm. that are ahead of their time. Yes. And that's why yeah. people look at you cross-eyed and squirrely-eyed and think, what's wrong with those people? They are out on a limb. Yes. Oh, I'll just take the limb, praise God, and I'll be out on the limb. Yeah. Hallelujah. Irregardless of what people have to say. You know, I was sharing uh, in Portland, and maybe I shared here, that we've gotten some persecution with this word. But you know what? I would rather be persecuted yes. than not have the word that the Lord has been revealing. I'll take it any day. And besides that, all who live godly shall suffer persecution. We're going to suffer some afflictions of the gospel for ministering this word. But I would rather suffer that. And, and actually, you know, I think many times what Jeremiah said, he said, when the heat comes, you won't even feel it. Because I really don't feel it. Now, I don't like it, but I don't feel it because I'm so, yes. you know, That's it. excited and so enthralled with what what the Lord is revealing to us and the experience right. I'm beginning to have. But I just never pay that any money. Right. It really doesn't matter. No. Yeah. Now look in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Now let, let me share some things with you because as I said earlier, there are those today that are teaching and they're connecting the 1,000 years yeah. and Revelation uh, chapter 20 specifically. They're connecting it with the four blood moons. And what they are doing, let me just say it this way. What they are saying is, they're really centering up on the external, but what they are saying is, in Genesis chapter 1, around verses 14, 15, and 16, it talks about the fact that the sun and the moon and the stars were set in the heavens for signs and seasons and times. And so what they're doing is focusing upon the sign. And saying that the moon, there's four blood moons, and they're going to turn blood red. And at the end of that, there's going to come the judgment of God. <coughs> but let me just tell you what a sign is. You cannot focus on a sign. Let me give an example. If I'm driving down the road, and I have my little granddaughter with me, and we see a McDonald's yeah. sign, and she says, I want to stop and have some chicken nuggets. Well, I'm certainly not going to stop at the sign and have some chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> But a sign is something that points to something else. And so the sun, moon, and stars were set for time, seasons, and so forth. Signs, times, and seasons. And so what they are doing with these four blood moons is they're centering up on the sign itself rather than realizing the sign points to something else. Hello. So don't be fearful about the four blood moons. It has nothing to do with the scripture, yes has nothing to do with the scripture and a coming judgment to this earth. has nothing to do with that whatsoever. You know, let them preach on, hey. But look what it says here now. Let me just kind of unravel this for you a little bit. In Joel 2 and verse 31, it says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible, and that's really the word awesome, day of the Lord come. Now, notice it doesn't say there that the sun is going to turn to darkness and that the moon is going to turn to red blood. It really uses the word into, which denotes a difference there. So what this is really saying here is that the sun is going to turn into the darkness and make the darkness light. There you go. Oh. And it is saying that the moon is going to turn into blood. And blood here is the word life. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And so when the moon turns into life, that's simply talking about the fact, how many remember the woman in Revelation chapter 12? She was sun clothed, had the moon under her feet, and a crown of stars upon her head, and she travailed in pain, and she birthed the man child she birthed Christ and so what that is simply talking about is the moon is what a reflection of the Sun and so this is talking about the fact a number of things It's talking about the fact that we're not just a reflection of the son but we are the son the many membered son and we are his very life but let me take that a little bit further because it doesn't stop there. It goes a little bit further. If the sun, the lights, the lesser light, and the greater light was put in the heavens for a sign, a sign is also a symbol and is also a shadow. 
So if blood here in Joel is life, then the moon turning into blood shows us that all of the symbolic types and signs and shadows and rituals are going to reveal what they point to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they point to what? They point to a people no longer thinking that they're just a reflection of the sun or no longer in darkness, but it's talking about a people that are brought into the reality of the blood, the reality of the life. They don't stop with the signs. They don't stop with the symbols. They don't stop with the rituals, but they go on to what that points to. And remember, the lesser and the greater lights were put in the heavens for signs. And so those that are teaching the four blood moons are focusing in an outward appearance on the sign rather than what the sign points to. Mm -hmm. Does that make any spiritual yeah. sense? Yes, it yeah. does. Mm -hmm. It makes a whole lot of spiritual sure. sense. Yeah. So in Joel 2.31, the old heavens and the old earth are passing away, and a new heaven and a new earth is coming into our awareness and into our consciousness, and it is directly connected with the day of the Lord, which is terrible or which is awesome so those preaching the four blood moons are simply focusing in an appearance realm on the sign rather than realizing that the sign points to something else it points to the darkness being swallowed up by the light it talks about the reflection us thinking that we're just a reflection of the sun to realizing we are the very many-membered Son and the very life of the Father personified in the earth. So that's really what this is talking about here in Joel. Now, if you look in Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Let's take this a little bit further. Because this 1,000 years or this day of the Lord is also connected with the rule and the reign of Christ. And let me just say, the rule and the reign of Christ is something that takes place and is happening in and through and as a people. Right? Mm -hmm. Notice what it says here in Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, yep. much, more, much more, I like that, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Mm -hmm. Where? Life. And when? For a thousand years? In a millennium day? Shall reign in heaven once we're raptured out? After we die in the pie in the sky? No. Shall reign in life. There's no reigning. There, there's nothing to reign over if you're thinking of some physical heaven that you're going to aspire to and go to. No room, nothing to rule and reign over there. That's right. Come on, you. So we reign in life by one Christ Jesus through the gift of righteousness and through the abundance of grace. And what is that? It is ta it, this is tied into love. It is tied into life. It is tied into the day of the Lord. It is tied into 1,000 year experience that John the Apostle experienced when he received the revelation here of the book of Revelation. Let's go on. Let's take it a little bit further. Let's go to John chapter 12 and verse 36. To reign, listen, to reign in the day of the Lord is to reign a thousand years in the symbology of the scripture. It is the experience of the most holy place. Again, it is living by faith. It's living from the inside out. It's when a people come to the place to where things have been destroyed between their ears that have to do with legality and religiosity and the fact that you're just finite and just mortal and limited. It has to do, this 1,000 years, this reign of Christ has to do with all of that. Yes. It's the experience of eternality. It is the experience of infinity. And yes, it's even the experience of immortality. Yes. Now that's a big one right there because people judge everything by the appearance, not yeah. us, but many people do today, even in Christendom. And for you to say, well, I'm an immortal being, my answer is this. Did Paul the Apostle not tell Timothy that there's only one that is immortal and that's Christ? Yeah. And are we not one with Christ? 
Or did your head come here and your body come a few minutes later? No, the two are one. The head and body are one. So what's said of him is said of us. What's true of him is true of us. Yes. We are an heir of God himself. We are a joint heir with joint Jesus heir. Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you see, it's not so out of the ordinary to say that everything that's true of him, which is immortal, infinite, eternal, incorruptible, unlimited, we have the mind of Christ, we're absent from the body. Wow. Blows my mind. Wow. Thank God. We put on the mind of, when we truly put on the mind of Christ concerning these things, that's what we're going to line up with. We're going to see that we are truly one in Christ. Hallelujah. You know, I told you last week that there's a scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, that tells us to leave the principles of the doctrines of Christ. And one of them is faith toward God. And I'm like, faith? We're to leave? That's a principle, the doctrine of Christ? To... <sighs> faith toward God? It's not faith toward God. Anytime you have faith in God or faith toward God, that's a duality. It's the faith of the Son of God. And let me just clear, declare tonight that God is not in you. He's in you, and he is you. You is him. You are one in him. He's not in. You know, when we say we read a lot of scriptures, you know, in the New Testament, Christ in us, and we're in Christ, and so forth. And you can read that out of a total duality. Because where is he if he's in me? Is he in my heart? Is he in my, is he in my gizzard? Is he in my liver? Is he in my kidney? Where, no, it's him as me. It's him as you. He's in you, yes, but he's in you as you because you are totally one in him. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And as I've been saying, I am just as spirit and you are just as spirit in your physical body as you are in your spirit. Because your body is even spirit slowed down to visibility. No separation. God is indivisible. Yeah. There's no separation in God. Come on. <laughs> We're one in Him. Spirit, soul, and body. Thank God. Now, John 12, 36. See, the one scripture that says, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. You know how I hear that? If your eye be single and you see your oneness, you realize your whole body is light. Okay? Otherwise, that's duality. John 12, 36, while ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when Jesus said, be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Yes. How do you be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect? Mm -hmm. Well, he's spirit, right? So to be perfect as he is, is to realize that none of this under Adam is true of us, right. but everything that's under Christ is the reality of our lives. Be ye perfect, see, yes. as he is perfect. He is spirit. Realize you are a spiritual being. You are not mortal. You're not even material. You are spirit that appears as mortal. You are spirit that appears as material. I'm not saying you're not material. I'm not saying there's not material here. Certainly there is, but it's spirit as that. And that's why, you know, the scripture says, and when uh, the disciple says, you know, teach us to pray, he said, that kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. One translation says, as in heaven, so in earth. Because why? Yes. What appears as a physical universe out of there is really a spiritual universe. Yes. Let me say that again. What appears as a physical universe out there is really a spiritual universe because it came out of the spiritual. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Come on. Oh, yes. It's material. And it appears material, but it is spirit as <laughs> material. <laughs> See, and until a people live out of this 1,000-year dimension that we're Whoa. talking about, they'll not see it that way. And until we see it that way, we're not going to be as effective as we could be True. in ministering to the groaning creation <laughs> and ministering one to another. See, and I think we have to tap into this to experience the fruit that remains that we talk about a lot. We have to understand that our food, our water, our money, finances, it's all, it's, yes, it, it appears material, but it's really spirit. Because you see, 
Supply is not the money you hold in your hand or have in the bank or the food that's on your table. Supply is invisible. And so the things that we have as food and money and, and water, what is that? That is spirit. That is That came out of the dimension of the realm of spirit. Yes, it's material, but it's spirit as material supply. And until we see it that way, I do not believe we're going to experience the perpetuity of that where it's a perpetual outflowing in our lives. Amen. Come on. Hello. Mm -hmm. Now, I kind of got off my course here a little bit, but let me get back here again. John 12, 36. While ye have light, believe in the light that ye may be. How can you be the children of light? Simply by realizing you be light. You be light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Then in Ephesians chapter 5, if you look at that one in verse 8, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 says, For ye were sometime darkness. See, to me, the only reason that I was darkness, as it says there, for ye were sometime darkness, is because I thought I was. Yes. yes. But we're waking up to the fact but the only reason we were in that condition is simply because we were hoodwinked and bamboozled by religion into thinking we were. And so, therefore, that was our experience. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, therefore, that was our experience, limitation. But in God, we have no limitation whatsoever tonight. Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometime darkness, but now... Are ye light? Jesus said to the disciples, You are the light of the world. Here it says, Now are ye light in the Lord, so walk as children of light. Amen. So in other words, we're the day. Mm. We're the 1,000 years. Mm. All that we read over here in the book of Revelation, actually all the way through it, mm. is who we be in Christ Jesus. That's who we are. We don't just have that in us. Oh, it's in us, but as us. Yes. We're one with it. Completely and totally one with it. Now, Joel 2. Joel 2, verses 1 and 2. You were there, but let's go back there. Joel 2, verses 1 and 2. I'm almost finished, believe it or not. <laughs> then we're going to go to Isaiah 66 and unravel a few things there. But my main focus tonight was just to share a little bit more with the 1,000 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. And let you realize it is not, it is not literal. Yeah. It is not literal. <laughs> it is symbolic. It is a realm. It is a dimension that a people are beginning to live out in the lovely here and now. Lovely. And as you live out of that, guess what? You be that. Yes. That's who you be. So That's who you be. Yeah. Joel 2, 1 and 2. Blow you the trumpet in Zion. That's what we're doing. Hallelujah. Now, clear sounding word. Hallelujah. Sound an alarm in the holy mount. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord. And didn't we just read that you're light and you're the day? Mm -hmm. And so if the 1,000 years is the day of the Lord and some things are happening in that dimension of the day of the Lord, then you're the 1,000 years as well. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Verse 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess. Oh, that sounds kind of bad. A day of clouds and of thick darkness, but it doesn't stop there. As the morning spread upon the mountains. So it's both gloominess and a day of clouds and a day of thick darkness, but it's also as a new day. Mm -hmm. To some it's darkness. Mm -hmm. To some it's a new day. It depends where you're seated. Don't give up your seat. It depends what you're looking at. It depends if you're on the high rise watching the parade. <laughs> seated in the heavens. Seeing the end from the beginning. Seeing that everything is now. Right now. Seeing that everything is. It is. Notice a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more after it. Listen to that. Yes. This people that are living this 1,000 year day of the Lord, there's never been a people like it, like them, and there shall never be a people yes. like them in the future. 
Mm. It's a 42nd generation, 42nd generation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And I was speaking with someone tonight. This is the generation. Yes, Some people is. are saying, well, it's going to come and maybe we're not going to experience mm. it. Listen, we can experience it. Yes. We are that generation yes. that can experience the ultimate in God. Mm. Otherwise, he wouldn't be bringing forth the word that he's bringing forth in this hour right. if yeah. we could not experience it in the now. Come on. Now notice what it goes on to say. Neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Listen to this. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing. Notice that. Nothing shall escape them. Yes. Mm. So this is talking about a people that are this 1,000 years. This is talking about a people that are this day of the Lord. This is talking about a people that are walking in the light as he is in the light. Mm -hmm. This is talking about a people that are the salt of the earth and are experiencing this. This is talking about a people that are bearing fruit that remains because they're living out of the dimension of the most holy or they're living from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You are that people. Yes. We are that people tonight. We yes. can experience. Listen, Abraham, how far can you see? However far you can see, that you can experience in the now. You don't have to wait for anything yes. in the future. Now. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. We have a lot of spiritually ill people today because ministers have pushed so much off into the future and said you can't have it until another day. Can't touch until this. another hour. Can't touch this. <laughs> can't touch this. Honey, we can do more and touch it. You got we, be it. Hey. we be it. We be it. Oh, we be now, it. Now, Isaiah 66. Oh, Isaiah 66 in closing. If I can, Isaiah 66. Verses 7 through 14. And let me show you a picture, a further picture, of a many-membered body of Christ tonight. Mm. Isaiah 66, verses 7 through 14. And then we'll go back and reread Revelation 20. Those few verses that we read when we began tonight. And we'll see how it lines up after what I've shared with you tonight. We'll go back and we'll read that with a new awareness. Not seeing something literally, but seeing that we are this 1,000 years. We are this day. We are the light. He is that in us and through us and as us. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 66, 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered as a, of a man child. So, in other words, before she travailed, she birthed Christ. She was bearing fruit. See, the scripture says we labor to enter into rest. And then out of that rest, there's something that is birthed. What is it? It's Christ. That's Revelation chapter 12, the sun-cold woman with the moon under her feet and a crown with 12 stars, the 12 redemptive aspects of the finished work of Calvary. She was clothed in her awareness, conscious awareness, with the sun, the S-O-N, realizing that she was not a reflection of the sun, but she was one with the sun. And as a result, she birthed the sun. As a result, that man-child was birthed. So first of all, before she travailed, she birthed this man-child out of this rest. Christ is birthed. We labor to enter into rest. Then out of that, he is born or he is birthed, and that happens primarily between our ears and our awareness. But notice it doesn't stop there. It goes on and it says, Who hath heard such a thing? Listen to that. Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Mm. What is that talking about? That is talking about this 1,000 years of Revelation chapter 20. Mm. This one day. In other words, there's a people who are walking in the awareness of what the woman in Revelation 12 walked in the awareness of. Yes, there has been some labor to enter into that rest to birth Christ. But you see, they didn't stop there. 
they have come to the realization that they are the light and they are the day and they are the 1,000 years. And so therefore they're living out of that. Yes. And that's what it means where it says, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So what do we see here in these two verses? We see that there's an awareness in the people of who Christ is in, through, and as them. And it says, before she travailed, she brought forth Christ. And then it talks about, after she travailed, she brings forth children. Uh -oh. In other words, that's the people, that's the kings that come to the brightness of yeah. their rising because they see that they're bearing the fruit that remains as a result of walking in the consciousness and the awareness of a work that is finished and realizing that they are not any of this under Adam, but they are all of that that is under Christ. Yeah. As we walk in that awareness and that consciousness and that realization, you see, we began to experience this new day, this 1,000 years, this dimension. Look what it goes on to say in verse 9. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith the Lord? What is he saying there? He's simply saying, what does a womb represent? We know the womb represents our awareness. We have the mind of Christ. But the womb represents our awareness where conception, where something is sowed of the mind of Christ, something is conceived, something is formed, and then it is projected out to the screen or to the experience of our lives. And so what he's saying here is, would I give you the mind of Christ? Would I give you a new woman, get rid of the old woman, and give you a new consciousness and a new awareness and nothing be birthed out of that? Yes. This is something that God is doing as we simply allow that to be done. It's something that he is doing in, through, and as us. And he's simply saying, would I give you all things that pertain to life and godliness? Would I bless you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies? Would I give you the faith of the Son of God? Would I give you the mind of Christ? Would I take away when I crucified the old man? Did I not crucify the old woman as well? Would I do all of that and place all of that within you and then you never come to the experience of that? Yeah. <laughs> the answer is no. Wow. Yes. Absolutely no. Verse 10. Now it makes sense. Wow. <laughs> Rejoice, verse 10, ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. Now, what is that talking about in verse 10? It's simply saying there's going to be a people that are going to rejoice with the first fruits. They're going to rejoice for us because they know that through us, as Romans 8 says, all creations on tiptoe looking for the manifestation of the sons of God, that they might be redeemed into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. So they're looking for us, and they're going to be rejoicing over us, not being jealous over us, but rejoicing with us and for us. That's what it's saying there in verse 10. And then notice the phrase, all ye that mourn for her. See, there's some that mourn for me tonight because they think I'm deceived. Yeah. <laughs> there's some that mourn for you tonight because they think that you are hoodwinked and bamboozled. Oh. You got a Kleenex? Hallelujah. All ye that mourn for her. Well done, sister. <laughs> they think you're deceived, but you know what? They're going to rejoice for you and with you one day. Yes. Yes. And that day is when they simply experience yep. this day of the Lord. Yep. Verse, uh, verse 13, verse 11, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breast of her consolation. You know, uh, I went to Chicago last weekend and I ministered to a group of people that are just like you, just as hungry. And let me tell you, they sucked it out of me. Yeah. <laughs> they were sucking that word out and I want to tell you just as here there was a momentum that was building just as it is here yeah. because they were sucking they were sucking they were sucking it out of me what I had to minister didn't suck but they sucked it out of me <laughs> with the breast of her consolation that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance 
of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. But what is that saying? That's simply saying they partake of the maturity and the development yeah. that right. has taken place within a people's yes. lives. On, and yes. they won't be jealous of us, but they will be delighted with the abundance of what yes. we give to That's them right. that is heavy, that is a true substance, and that is of the glory of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Thus, for thus saith the Lord, verse 12, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles, Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be damned on upon her knees. Verse 13, As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. What is that talking about? That's just simply talking about the fact that she will be encouraged instead of made to feel like she's messed up and she's out on a limb and she's involved in something that is not the truth. Come on. <laughs> she's comforted. Thank God. Yes. Verse 14, And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. And when you see what? When you see what? This. The church world? This is that. The world? And the church world? The religious church world? And the world as a whole? When you see it? the way that our Father sees it, yep. then you will be effective yep. Amen. to minister. I've said for yeah. years, as a king, yeah. priest, minister, yep. we must walk by faith and see through the finished work of Calvary yeah. what is already finished and how finished it is yeah. concerning the nations, concerning even the religious church world. And as we do and minister the truth of the word, the Holy Spirit will make them an offer they cannot refuse. Yes. Right. And they will come and they'll say, men and brethren, what must we do to experience this? And we'll say, there's nothing that you got to do primarily, but there's something you must realize and something you must believe. And every tongue will confess, every yes. knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Simply because there is a people in the earth that are experiencing this glory and seeing them in the glory as well. We cannot see them as undone. We cannot see them as sinners. We cannot see them any way except in Christ. They may be dead in Christ, not even acknowledging him. They may be asleep in Christ, asleep in religiosity. But if we can see the end from the beginning, if we can see the prey from the high rise, Amen. then we'll be effective mm -hmm. in the ministry that we have That's right. for the world. Amen. Now, with that in mind, go back to Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 20. As I close, Revelation chapter 20. And let me read those verses that I read when we started tonight. With that in mind, that you are the day, you are the light, you are one in him, you are the 1,000 years here. Mm. And the 1,000 years is simply an experience. It is not 1,000 literal years. It is an experience of the most holy. It is the experience of the Feast of Tabernacles. <coughs> it is the experience of living by faith. It is the experience of living from the inside out. It is the experience of in the day of the Lord, as 2 Peter chapter 3 says, the fire of God begins to burn up all the false oh. concepts and the false ideas. It is the day of the fire and brimstone. It is the day of the lake of fire. And can I declare to you tonight, you be the lake of fire. Amen. We connected in chapter 19 the lake of fire with the word that comes out of our mouth. Yep. That's the lake of fire. Brimstone is just the and it's the fire of God's where we get the word sulfur, which is a healing agent. All of the book of Revelation from chapter 1 to 22 is all about the finished work of Calvary, the decreation of what Adam created. It is all about the revelation of Jesus Christ and what that means to us and how we are vitally connected with that. 
Amen. And how we are one with him. It's Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. And it's all good. The vials and the seven last plagues in chapter 15, we found out they were great and they were marvelous. So the day of the Lord, all this happens in this 1,000 years. The day of the Lord. It's not literal, it's symbolic. He sent and signified his word unto John by his angel. Signified just means it's all in sign and symbol. It's all in sign and symbol. Now, with that in mind, verses 2 through 6, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years were finished. Now, I shared with you concerning that, that this is talking about a people. Whatever your idea is about Satan or the devil, to me it doesn't make that much difference. But I believe anything that accuses can be termed as the devil or Satan. Anything that accuses, any condemnation, any guilt-ridden feelings, any of that, any of this under Adam can be classified as Satan or the devil, thinking that you are still in that dimension. So then notice it goes on, and cast him into the bottomless pit. None of this has any bottom. None of this has any foundation. Religion has no foundation. Works, toil, and sweat has no foundation. Thinking you're finite, thinking you're mortal, corruptible, limited, none of that has any foundation. The foundation has been completely kicked out from underneath it, Amen. and all of that has been bound by the 12 redemptive aspects of the finished work of Calvary. Listen, this has absolutely no power and no presence, unless you think it does, unless you give it power. There's only one power in reality. There's only one presence. There's only one mind. Because of the work of Jesus. Cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be finished. Now, we talked about that last week, if you didn't see the, uh, the uh, YouTube presentation of that. What was that talking about where it says there, and shut him up and, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be finished? I brought that out concerning the fact that the work of Jesus that took place over 2,000 years ago, the head is at rest concerning that. Mm -hmm. And for Satan to be loose to season just means that the body has got to get the revelation. Mm -hmm. And until yeah. we get the revelation that there's only one power, one presence, and one mind, we can't allow another power that we think right. has power, yeah. mm -hmm. hello, right. to torment us. Yeah. So that's all it's talking about when it yeah. talks about Satan being loosed mm -hmm. for a season. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he should be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. In other words, a people are on thrones seated. They're at rest because they realize that their judgment is not in their future. It's in their past. Amen. That's what it's talking about. Judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And I brought out last week how there was a twofold beheading. What it means there, a beheading simply means in the Greek, axed with a two-edged sword. So there's an inward beheading and an outward beheading. The inward beheading is we got rid of the old mind and now we have a new mind, the mind of Christ. The outward beheading is all of the religiosity and works and toil and sweat and all of these things under Adam, we had to be brought to the realization that they have no power and no presence and that's an outward beheading. That's what it's talking about when it talks about being beheaded there. And then it says, for the witness of Jesus. And what is that talking about, the witness of Jesus? And I gave the example, if, you, if someone uh, has a car accident in front of the house out here and someone comes in and tells you about it, you're not a true witness. You're a witness of a witness. So we have to come to the realization, not just knowing about him, but we must come to the realization to where we really know him intimately, not just knowing about him. So we don't want to stop just with the principles of truth, but we want to be brought into the place to where we experience yes. him, intimately experience him. So they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hand, and remember I shared with you how that six is the number of man, 600 is the number of warfare, 66 is the number of false images and ideas. Mm. So they weren't worshiping any of that. 
They were not thinking that they're just human. Mm. Jesus isn't dealing with the human race. Mm. Hello. Mm. He dealt with the human race at Calvary when he nailed the old human to the cross. Mm. He's dealing with spiritual men today. Come on. Hello. Yes. So they're not worshiping this image of the beast. And listen, it says they reigned, they lived, and they reigned. And I shared that with you from Romans chapter 5, 17. Reigning through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Reigning in this life. They reigned with Christ a thousand years. Yeah. In other words, they reigned out of this dimension of experience yeah. that they were experiencing. Mm -hmm. Alright? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. In other words, those out there that are dead in Christ. And I wish he'd have added and asleep in Christ, but he didn't. They will not live and experience the life of Christ until a people are a first fruit are living out of this realm of the thousand years. <laughs> Can you hear that? That's what that's saying there. Yeah. The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. In other words, till a people are experiencing this day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then the rest of the dead say will live. This is the listen, this is the first resurrection. And I shared with you how that, that last phrase should have been at the end of verse four. And I, I showed you why. I don't have time for that tonight. Then verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Remember what I shared concerning that? Mm -hmm. The word first is protos in the Greek, and it means a superior resurrection and a greater resurrection. Mm -hmm. A present resurrection. The resurrection that Paul wanted to experience while still living in the physical body. In fact, that's what the Amplified says in Philippians 4.11. He wanted to live and experience resurrection while still living in the physical body. So this first resurrection is talking about a superior and a greater resurrection, a present resurrection while still living in the physical body. And then we centered around the fact that the word resurrection there, anastasis in the Greek, simply is talking about an uprising to recover truth and a reversal. And I shared with you how that when Adam partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there was a reversal that took place. He woke up to the dimension of finite and human, and he fell asleep to the dimension of eternal, immortal, unlimited. And now what's happening, we are experiencing a present resurrection, a superior, a greater resurrection in the lovely here and now. And we are having a reversal. We're falling asleep to all that's written under Adam, and we're truly waking up to all that is written under Christ. And this is what Paul the Apostle said many times, awake, awake to righteousness and sin not. And Peter said, awake, wake up. It's time for a people. See, I don't believe we're living in a time where the body of Christ needs to mature. Because the mature one lives in us as us. But yes. we need to wake up. Yes. We need to wake up. We need to, we need to have this, and we are, this reversal where we're falling asleep to all of that natural. And waking up to all of that which is spiritual. And then notice, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. In other words, this will have absolutely no power over you. And when it has no power over you, you'll not have to experience the vials in the seven last plagues. Even though they're good and wondrous mm -hmm. and wonderful, you won't have to experience them. But guess what? We all have. Because we've all come that route. We don't despise the day of small beginnings. We all came up through religiosity to some degree. And if you didn't, you were raised thinking that you were corruptible and you were mortal and you were just human and you were all of that under Adam. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be, not just be, have the name of we're king priest ministry, they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him. Now let me change this. And shall reign, Christ shall reign in through and as them, as it says there, a thousand years or out of this throne realm dimension. Amen. That's all that's saying there. Beautiful. That's all that's saying there. So I declare to you tonight, continue to eat lamb. Yep. Continue to partake of the bread and the wine. Because as you do, everything that needs to be swallowed up, 
between your ears. Mm -hmm. That would prevent the free flow of the life of the Lamb out of you. See, because I believe when we have these hang-ups and these false concepts and ideas about God, when the life begins to flow, it hits up against those false concepts, and it doesn't flow out of us pure. I want the life of God to flow out of me, and when it gets out here, it's just as pure as in here when it started. And you see, when all of those things in the day of the Lord are burnt up, there'll be the free flow of the life of the Lamb. And as it says in Revelation 21 and 22, the river that flows out will be clear as crystal with no debris of man-made dogmas, man-made concepts, ideas that are not in line with the truth of the Word of God. But there'll be a free flow of a river of life. And I shared with you last week how that when we really experience what I'm talking about, that's when we can know we have jumped into the river and we're in waters to swim in and everything that comes in contact with us shall live. You're over experience our head. life. When you're over your head, and honey, we over our head. I believe we're over our head to a certain degree. Thank God, but thank yeah. God for it. Yes. See, and then we could go back to Ezekiel chapter 1, and we'll do a teaching on that. Maybe it will be apart from Revelation. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 22, talks about the terrible crystal. Oh, what's the terrible crystal? It's an awesome crystal, crystal, and it's the mind of Christ. And it says it stretched forth over their heads, the cherubim's heads, the apprehended one's heads. That's your awareness. That's simply putting on the mind of Christ. And then there are some consequences that some people experience, good consequences, as they come in contact with the river of living water, Amen. clear as crystal that flows out of this city. And how many know the city is feminine? The city speaks of your awareness, mm -hmm. just as the women speak of our awareness. And then we get into Revelation 21 and 22. We see foundations that have the names of the apostles of the Lamb. We see 12 gates that have to do with all of the tribes of Israel. Every one of those are a consciousness and a level of awareness that we flow through as the city of God. Every one of them. Hallelujah. Awesome. The book of Revelation is awesome, awesome book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight yes. for your people. Yes. Thank you for the truth. Yes. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the true teacher that is teaching us, Amen. revealing to us the realities of the kingdom of God, yes. which we are tonight. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for whole man redemption tonight. Thank you that we don't have to wait to receive anything or experience anything, but we can experience it all in the here and now. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you tonight in the great and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Any questions or anyone have anything you'd like to share tonight? Yes, go right The ahead. Spirit of God gave me something when you were talking about the, there in Isaiah where the uh, they would come and sit on the lap. Uh, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Now, this is a spiritual realm, remember? It's not natural little babies running around here. Yeah. For such is the kingdom of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's th Those are going to be the people that um, come to the brightness of our, yes. of us. Yes, it is. Absolutely. They're the ones who are going to mm -hmm. come yes. and suffer the children. Yes, and they're coming. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They're coming. Yeah. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. Absolutely. From the north, the south, the east, and the west. Yeah. Not that the natural children are important, but you know what yes. I mean. This is a spiritual thing. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Yeah, so good. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Awesome, Dr. K. Yeah. 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 Yeah.